Good morning, you guys. I hope everybody has had a fabulous weekend. Welcome to video number one. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Omid and the Sussex Squad. Some very information has come out. If it's true, it's like zang. Okay, but before we get started, I have a thank you message to somebody. Let's go. I want to start off by thanking two Shih Tzu fans of Finns named Colette and Lilo, or Lilo, for sending this particular toy to Finn. This ranks right up there with the last toy he got. You guys are fabulous. Now, for those of you who are wondering, I do have an Amazon wish list in the description box. And since it is my birthday this week, I've also added a few items for myself just in case. But I, I do have to say I loved getting the cards last year. It was so sweet of everybody to send me a birthday card. All right, let's move on to our story for today. Here comes Omid Scobie. We haven't heard from him in a while. I kind of wondered what happened to him. He fell off the map. But basically, he was saying that the British press was pointing out, because they were pointing out the hypocrisy of Harry and Meghan, it was a racist thing. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I had to share this because it perfectly illustrates how today's royal beat is a cesspool of bigoted, ignorant, and racist commentary. So here's what he's talking about. It's a video, lasts for about a minute. And in it, the royal reporters are talking about Nigeria, how poor it is, how the majority of people earn less than a dollar a day, how starvation is rampant, and somehow that's racist and they're bigots because they're pointing out statistically known proven facts. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Please keep in mind, this is a man who lied to a court of law under oath saying Harry and Meghan had nothing to do with finding freedom. And also who claims he never named anybody as racist in his book only to find out that he did after Harry and Meghan insinuated and stated that there was racism in the royal family, but then retracted it, but are now going forward with those allegations again. Omen is just as much a pot stirrer as Meghan Markle is. I mean, look what he wrote here. They're pressed over a visit that didn't cost the British taxpayer a penny. That's got nothing to do with it. It cost the Nigerian taxpayer a lot of money, and these people are literally starving. He put something like this up. I see the clowns are out in full force again because people had the guts to put up tweets that he didn't agree with. For instance, here's one. Great weird pretend royal tour of dodgy Nigeria by Harry and Meghan. What's next, Somalia? That's actually a spot on comment. <laughs> it was a fake tour. They're desperate to show that they're still royal in the eyes of the world. Now what this person wrote really caught me. In a bid to make himself still look royal, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor went to Nazi Germany in 1937. He had abdicated the, the throne the previous year. So they arrived by train in Berlin. They were greeted by Nazi officials, cheering crowds, Hitler himself, and then this man who also had all of his military affiliation stripped also did exactly what Harry did and reviewed the troops. <laughs> Not kidding. Unfortunately, the Nigerian human rights record is right there where Nazi Germany's was, just about the same. And it was thought that this was done so that Wallace Simpson could experience a state visit. Stick with me here. These are a series of tweets between Sussex Squad members that recently came to light. Thank you to Princess Chelsea on Twitter for this. So basically, this person says that Harry and Meghan got free food, free hotel, free stay, free clothes, and Meghan was supposed to meet and have a photo with the First Lady, but it was denied. That she had reached out to the British consulate, and it was confirmed that this was a private visit, so no photo op. And somebody wrote, well, that's good. And she wrote back, you know, this person now works in the First Lady's office, so she knew about the request. This person wrote, the officials in the presidency were instructed not to participate in the tour. There was no active engagement from the federal government and the army. There was no secret service officers, diplomatic officers, or Nigerian police that the army paid for their transport, security, and accommodations, and that Harry and Meghan were demanding and insufferable, and they had to change their suite because they wanted minimal contact with people. So the defense provided minivans, but their team requested the SUVs, and they had to use the chief of staff. Staff officer vehicle. 
It only got worse from there. Megan apparently had a long list of demands. They came with their own chef. So as I reported to you, no, they didn't touch any of the food. They traveled with their chef, a stylist, a wardrobe assistant for Harry. And she said, I saw them when we had their private meeting with Megan. She thanked us, the Sussex squad, for our work and support for her and Harry and all we had done on social media. She said she liked some of our names and write-ups on social media and informed us about other upcoming projects. Harry walked by and said, high. She's very thin, I must say. Now, this person also claims that Harry and Meghan paid into some of the events that they attended, that the Mo Abduyu event was already planned, but Meghan's team reached out to the organizer and paid for her attendance, which is good for more Abdudu or whatever her name is. And they said, well, Auntie Mo only cares about her money and her projects. Meghan traveled with a chef? And the woman reiterates, oh, yes, stylist, wardrobe assistants, you know, they were there all the time in the accommodations. They also pointed out that this was not about Invictus. And somebody said, we all know that. It's about branding, not the veterans. The hospital patients were planted and orchestrated. Do you see any army doctors around? They didn't visit any military hospital in Abuja or national hospital where veterans received treatment. It's sad. They made it all about Megan. And the person wrote, oh, I see your fellow squad too. And they put up this picture of this woman, Peace, with Omid. But this picture was from years ago. That picture was taken outside of St. Paul's Cathedral. Now, we do know that that woman was there, but this picture was not taken in Nigeria. Now, they're saying that she left her sick child in the UK, and uh, they said, well, Harry and Meghan always pay for her trip, her expenses. She talks to Meghan and Omid all the time. She knew about the trip before we did. It took months of planning. Now, this girl... Here she is outside when Megan did the One Young World speech. Remember where she talked about herself like 50 times in five minutes? Here's a picture of her in Nigeria. Here's a picture of her when she was in the Netherlands. Remember that trip? Here she is when she was in Germany speaking to the guy that was in charge of Invictus. Here she is again in Germany posing actually with Harry. Here she is posing in case you don't recognize him. That's Chris Shipp. The, the British journalist. Here she is again at the service of Thanksgiving for Invictus inside the cathedral. And here she is in that same outfit where she was seen hugging Omid outside of the cathedral, trying to drown out the booze that Megan was getting. The point I'm trying to make, guys, is that this is absolutely a coordinated effort. Omid's on the payroll. There's absolutely, I don't know why he continues to deny it. It's so obvious that he works for Harry and Meghan. He's her spokesperson. He puts out stuff. And we also know now beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Sussex squad works for Harry and Meghan, which is why you've never heard them. Harry and Meghan denounce them. All right. Now, for those of you who sent me a birthday card last year, thank you so much. And if you want to send me another birthday card this year, the um, address is in the description box. I so did love getting them. You guys know that I literally, except for my husband and kids, I literally have no family left. So it's really nice to get those cards. Don't forget to hit the like button to help me with my algorithm and follow me on over to video two. You don't want to miss it. Let's go.